electronic wing. Um, in accordance to Act 92, there is no physical location to location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance to the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we're providing public access to the meeting by telephone, video, or other electronic means using the Zoom platform. And all members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and, if desired, participate in this meeting by contacting the town clerk to request the invitation to the meeting or looking at the public notices that um, show the link to the meeting. So, um, in which we have previously given notice to the public and um, and uh, on the website and then publicly posted and people that have requested emails. So, therefore, move forward as long as Zoom lets us communicate properly. Uh, does anyone have any additions to the agenda at this time? Going once, going twice? Yeah. Oh, Catherine. Uh, I just want to do an update from the uh, Envision Rochester uh, School Building Committee uh, from uh, the meeting that we attended on February 24th. So okay. it won't take very long, just a little brief update. All right. I think I'm on the agenda with the, with the players. For the park application? Yes, yes, you are. All right. Cool. All right, so I'll start with the prior meeting minutes of June 8, 2020. And um, I read through them. They look um, properly representative of what we did on June 8th. So I move we um, adopt those minutes as recorded. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. Um, we've got, um, Joan, you're on the top of the list here. Have you got any um, updates for us? Uh, well, I noticed there are some items on, on the agenda already having to do with uh, town garage cookup and um, of the, uh, uh, the NRCS yep. uh, program for Dean Mendel's property. So when we get to those points, I'll, I have a couple of things to add. Okay, all right. Otherwise, no updates. Okay. Um, we don't have anyone from the library. Um, I was talking with Cooter this afternoon. They're um, excited for the sewer hookup in the town garage there. And they've been, um, when that work is done, excavating is done for that, they're also going to use that to remove the remainder of the, the um, footers for the old um, um, sifters, you know, sand sifting unit, which they're going to replace this summer. So uh, I think it's up to report to us no way. Um, Terry is not here, but it seems like we're all ready to drink clean water again from the taps, which is nice. Thank you, Terry. Um, on the new business, we've got a park use application approval for Pierce Hall on the um, barbecue takeout on the 4th of July, which is um, kind of neat. The way they presented it is, um, of course, as a takeout like everyone else is doing and as a way to still um, hold on some of the celebratory aspect that is we're used to with um without the normal gathering on the park you guys what do you guys think about that becky donates in charge of it and i'm pretty darn sure she's good at managing stuff so. yeah there we go just, I just don't want him to encourage picnicking on the park, that's all. Right. I think she's making a point of, of, of telling people, you know, this is to go. So maybe we should move the picnic tables back, you know, away from the front so it's not so convenient. It's probably a good idea. You know, just to make it a little bit more socially acceptable, I guess. Um, and if, but if, if you do that, could you move them? have the town crew move them back to where they are now after the fourth is over because I know that if they're moved in too far they'll be in the way of the farmers market. And I know I've seen a lot of people using them, you know, fairly close to the sidewalk. They park and have their lunch there. So 
I just I, at an event like that, I just don't want to encourage people to hang out. That well. I see your and, point. It, and I maybe can. they could move them back after their barbecue. Yeah, I see your point. But that, that was we'll make sure that they're moved away and then moved back. Yeah, thank you, Bruce. Thank after you. the takeout. Um, yeah. Robert just um, joined and we're talking about the park use application from um, to um, do a takeout for the barbecue um, to benefit Pierce Hall. So, yeah. And um, yeah, so I'd, I'd, um, I'd move to grant that application. I'll second that. Yep, all in favor? Right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Also with, um, on the same day, we've got an application from the White River Valley players to um, dis uh, for a display of mannequins for the 4th of July. And, um, in conjunction with the whole um, concept of a reverse parade um, up and down the valley. And um, I think that, um, yeah, if all the mannequins occupied the picnic tables, that would keep people from being <laughs> Yeah, that would be a good idea. idea. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the benches, too. <laughs> the idea is to have them along 100, but out of the way of the barbecue. Yeah. Um, um, and, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Sue. Yeah, and uh, they'll. They'll be costumed and they'll have uh, flags in one big hand and uh, and there'll be a sign somewhere saying um, Happy Fourth of July from the players. Um, and they might also be along 100 on private property too. We don't know how many are going to be made at this point. Um, Sue, am I correct that we were that they were talking about leaving, leaving them up for fourth and fifth? Uh, yes, and that was the other thing to tell you. It's for the whole weekend. That the idea being that this reverse parade can be spread out, and there won't be any traffic jams. Mm -hmm. I just sounds like a fun idea. I I move to approve that application. I second that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, holding on to some festivities on the fourth. Um, we also have a request for. Um, less festive activity but important nonetheless a request um, for the town's permission for uh, the household hazardous waste collection on august 15th they usually set up in the town clerk's parking lot and do that and they uh, um they've um maintained that they're they're totally up with the covid distancing safety and not interacting with the public eye I think it's a great, great service. I think it should be publicized a little more than it is. A lot of people, I know personally, I don't. Luckily, I can see the parking lot in my house and I see when it's happening, but it's um, it's, um, it's really handy at time times to get rid of paint and what other miscellaneous yeah, um, things. Julie, if, if, if Julie or someone else could send me the, the basics, right, you know, I put it in a week beforehand too with the paper as well as the Yeah, I think that's, that's a good idea. But and I have, yeah. I have a question. Does that include things like like help, like batteries, like from your school alarm batteries and that kind of stuff? Or not? Good question. I don't know that. Because someone asked me that the other day. I guess they'd seen a sign or something and I, I was in the NQ Max and I said, I don't know, but I have a whole bag full of batteries I'd love to get rid of. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I'm not sure. I guess it would be um, worth a call to find out. Maybe if you do write an article, you yeah. could contact okay. the folks and, and ask that question. I'd be happy to, but yeah. I, I can't be the only person who's got used batteries. In no, you're not. I think when you go down to the to the Bethel uh, Royalton landfill there, that uh, where they have the the recyclable and the trash delivery, there's a there is, you know, places to do all that too. So I would say the hazardous thing probably works that same way. And usually, when they have a press release, they usually uh, list those items that they will accept. Okay, maybe I'll do that if I call. I could call as well and have that information along. Oh, Julie, thank you. If you would, that'd be wonderful. And if you'd send it to me when you get it, I'd appreciate it. Sure. So um, I'd move to approve that request. And I'll second that. And all in favor? Right. Right. All right. All right. And now we have uh, um, 
a request to use a mass coma loan note. Um, do you want to give us a little um, background on this, John? Uh, that, that's, that's Julie. Uh, right, yeah. Julie's job. Okay. So we have, Our job, but, yeah. we have the outstanding loan for uh, all the work from the April storm. Uh, that loan, um, if that loan ends on July 8th. So I spoke with Beth at the bank, and she suggested that we uh, extend it for a year uh, with the anticipation that more, I mean, we're still working on FEMA projects. Uh, we have a, we have an amount of money that we could give them, um, but with uh, the money that we have spent and the money that we're going to receive from federal highway, the Bethel Mountain Project, reimbursing the town for the town expenses, so that's all money that the town has already laid out. So we thought, Becky and I, uh, with talking with the bank, that if we hold off paying that large amount until August, when tax money starts coming in, it kind of gives us a little bit of a cushion. And then uh, at that point, Joan had mentioned that FEMA money and the rest of the Bethel Mountain money will be coming in. And that will, that, that when after today is adding that all up, uh, that gives us a large, a really large amount of money to be paying them in August, and then we should be in pretty good shape. But um, we also have, I think Joan said, seven more sites that, uh, seven or so sites from FEMA that still need to be done. So that still gives us money to use for that. So, if you sign the, if, by signing the loan, it just gives us another year to, um, you know, finish up these projects. More elbow room. That makes sense to me. Thank you. Um, Frank, do you have any comments about that? I don't really have any comments. I think it's a good idea to keep the money on hand and now until we know what the tax revenue is going to be in August to give us some idea. Uh, I talked with John this morning. I know uh, you did also do, and he gave me a list of the FEMA jobs that he wants to do and the priority that he wants to do them in and some numbers with the cost. And I'll, he wants a copy of this given back to us, but this is the only, I have the only copy right now. And I'll be, uh, taking a couple copies of this and I'll get one to Joan and we can uh, go over it. And he's got them listed by priority what he wants to do and how he wants to deal with them. So um, I'll get, I can be in touch with Joan on that and get these out so we can get moving on it. Thank you. Yep. So I, I think it's a good idea. I'd move to uh, approve the um, renewing that the mass common loan well, note. I'll second that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 There is a slight increase in the in the interest on that note, though. Yeah. It should be noted, but not a not a great significant amount. Yeah. Half a percentage point, I believe. Is what it is. Yeah. I think yeah. it's worth it for the elbow room. Yeah. 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 I, I agree, hundred percent. All uh, right, um, hooking up the town garage to the town water system. Uh, good question. Is it just the water or is it water and sewer? Or like um, well, it's already hooked up to water. This would be hooking up the sewer. Okay. Uh, Terry gave me a list of the setup of the stuff that he needs to do and uh, the equipment. He's looking at one and a half to two days. He needs two different excavators, a small one and a large one. And they'll need to run a drill to, to drill through the frost wall with a four inch pipe. Uh, the reasoning for the two excavators is around back to dig into the building, they're gonna need a smaller machine. And he's well concerned that the 
the cement, there's a cement pipe that they have to dig near and you can't get that or else, you know, you're, you're kind of in deep doo-doo there. Uh, and the town's going to haul 14 to 15 yards of keystone that they'll need. And uh, he's getting the pipe. So that was what he wrote down on the table this morning the other day. Um, excuse me, did I miss when this is taking place? What date do you want to know? Uh, John told me they're going to do it on Monday. Okay, so Monday the 29th. Yes. Who's, who's doing the digging? Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I, I left that up to them. I, I, I sounds know. like Charles Smith is the one that's going to be doing the digging. And also, um, um, to a large extent, because he is willing also to do some of the concrete work, which Cooter was failing to find any um, any concrete contractors who were willing to, you know, look at the job. It's not that big of a job. If I could add a couple things to that. Yep. Uh, the timing of starting the work is good because we just got the permit from DEC today. Um, we couldn't have started without that, so uh, that's in view now. Um, and then Frank had asked me this afternoon to uh, see if it was correct that uh, the state would not be charging a connection fee since it's a municipal building. And the answer is that's right. Uh, I got company from something from DEC that they don't charge it for that. It's a town building. That's about $1,200. Um, we don't have to pay. Thank you, Joe. All right. All right, Frank, um, you're all warmed up. Do you want to um, explain to us more about the Breakneck Group meeting with the NRCS that's going to happen on Friday? That'll happen on Friday at 10. I think uh, I asked John to attend with me. Yeah. so that there's another person with eyes and ears and i ran into dean today and we had a slight conversation about it and you know this is really on his dime it's not ours we're the only thing we're doing is the paperwork and jones doing that so uh, that's about the only cost of the town we're going to have there um, i've got some questions to ask as far as you know it's got to go out to bid um, it's a big job, and Dean wants certain things done, and I don't know if they're going to allow that or not. And if all the bids come in higher, I'm not sure how that all works, and I'll be asking those kind of questions on Friday. Um, I have a question. What does, I forgot, what does NRCS stand for? Natural Resource Conservation Service. Okay, thank you. SDA, U.S. Department of Agriculture. Resource so that'll be interesting to hear how that that falls out. That yeah, and if Dean, you know, feels it's not something he wants to, that he doesn't get what he wants, he may not even do it. So, are you sure, Frank, that there's no cost to the town? Usually, this program uh, does involve some town funds to contribute. Well, if we contribute, we'll be getting a return on it. And, and that's a question I'm going to ask, because in my conversation with Michael Point during the week, I talked with him a couple times, and he, he said it's, it's usually a pass-through cost, and we get reimbursed for any monies that we have, except for maybe Joe's time. Okay, so, yeah, I will attend, too, because I was at the first meeting, and I was asked that we had about a year ago. So I will attend as well. All right, so could you um, have a line that? Would you warn that, Julie, so they can do to those can meet? Patty, that's at 10 on Friday. Got it, yep. Is this okay. a Zoom meeting? No, no it's, it's the a first visit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, I um, um Stu, do you want to um no who wanted to give us an update from the school school building meeting that was Catherine? Yes, Catherine. And Robert 
was here too, I see. Yeah. So um, we met, uh, Robert Mayer and I met uh, with the select board back in February, February 24th, to get the blessing of the select board for the Envision Rochester Building Committee to explore options for the town acquiring one of the two uh, buildings on the campus. And we got it. And then uh, we went to the, the school board on March 3rd with the same presentation and we got their blessing. Then the pandemic hit and uh, all that work got put on the back burner. Uh, we could go tonight, that building committee reconvened and um, a letter has gone out now to all the participants in the work in the uh, February workshop of Envision, because we're doing public outreach now to sort of do brainstorming sessions to try to get a proposal together for public uh, review by August 15th. So we've asked, we're first going to the Envision group, uh, and there's a significant amount of people that that includes, I think it's in the 50s. And they, I think you've got a, a copy of Vic's letter. I think you sent it to the select board, right? Did you get a copy on that letter? Because it went to the school board too, I think it, yes? I think I did it, it wasn't in with the packet of information for this meeting, but yeah. We like if you don't have it, I can send it out. No. Uh, but basically it's just a letter saying where we are, that we're reconvening, that we're now doing the public outreach to be in the brainstorm session process to uh, and have their feedback uh, in by July 15th uh, for a preliminary proposal by uh, in writing by August 15th that will then be submitted for public wider public uh, comment. So that's sort of where we're at. We just wanted to update you. And there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of questions. Yeah. And it's a process. Robert, want to say anything? That's great to me. Uh, it's a lot of moving parts in the subject, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, I think enthusiasm for this complicated thing is coming back, and, and the committee's enthusiastic about it, and we're getting up, uh, getting outreach from other people. So it's in motion. The process is coming. So we just want to keep you informed as we promised we would. Thank you. We'll be all ears. Yeah. All righty. We, we will be setting up the polling place uh, this next week, or this week, the end of this week. Uh, so I'm going to help out doing that, uh, basically marking up COVID distance and uh, setting up the booths and doing that sort of thing. I'll, I'll probably try to get a, another person or so. I thought I might go through the, the uh, Board of Adjustment and get a couple of those people to help out. Uh, I think Julie's, I think we're doing it on Friday, is that correct? Thursday. Thursday? Thursday afternoon. All right. Um, I have a question about voting. Um, in the report that came out from the RSUD, the booklet just says it's um, in-person voting will take place on July uh, uh, 30th, uh, June 30th, excuse me, at the high school, but it doesn't say where, and I'm, just, I'm wondering if you could, if, if, uh, if, you know, be a little clearer. Well, it's it's in, in the two buildings towards the, the uh, uh, skate space. Uh -huh. It's, it's uh, Kay Stringer's room and okay. And then it's the next room beside hers where we have a, a one way in and one way out. And uh, Julie and Becky have laid out the inside to be safe as possible. And one of the reasons why we're gonna use it to start with is so we can get a better handle on, you know, any adjustments we need to make with the primary coming up and also the, the election in the fall. So. Uh, I think it's a good idea to start with it, uh, to try it. Um, I'm going to put down some tape and, and make some uh, barricades with uh, flagging and, and uh, some cones and so we can just have a, you know, as safe as possible entryway and so forth. Okay. Thank you. 
we'll right. have some signage. We'll have some signage in the parking lot uh, directing people where it is and that kind of thing. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, because it didn't say in the booklet, it just said at the high, former high school building. And it's like, okay, where? <laughs> yeah. It'd be more it's, on those, it's on the end by the skate space. It's a, right. It's, it's right well, there. I know where you're talking about now. I just, I was hoping that you, I was, you wanted to be a little more specific. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. This is Burma. Will there be masks that you give to people? Should they not come prepared with a mask for any reason? Uh, we'll have some. Um, um, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, we'll have we'll have some available if somebody needs one. But uh, good, I we'll have them. Good idea. Okay, great. Thanks. And we'll have all the other, uh, you know, hand sanitizer and spray and you know that kind of stuff. Good. Thanks. <laughs> All right, um, boy, we're kind of whipping through this tonight. Is there anything else that anyone would like to speak about that we haven't touched on? Going once? Going twice? All right, everybody head to the river. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night.